these are some fresh specimens that I've got today um, for the carrots and they're, they're, they've still got the soil on them, that's how fresh they are. Um, and what the thing that you've got to remember is to find their best side like everybody else. We have a, we have a best side um, and a not so good side and that side's absolutely wonderful and you turn it around and you discover it's got a great big split that's probably full of little creepy crawlies down the back so we'll ignore that side and we'll choose the, the, the nice one at the, at the front. This is certainly no prize-winning catwalk top-of-the-class carrot, but it is about to have its portrait painted by Bridget Gillespie, one of the best botanic illustrators in the business. For over 20 years, her art has been to depict plant forms of all sorts with scientific accuracy, but in capturing their particular characteristics, she also reveals their innate beauty. For many of those years, she has been deeply involved in exploring the nature of fruit, as witnessed by her 51 exquisite illustrations for the book The Northern Pomona, Apples for Cool Climates, published in 2007. It took her two whole apple growing seasons to complete that task. And it was for her fruit paintings she was awarded her two gold medals by the Royal Horticultural Society, one for 14 paintings of plums and the other for her depiction of pears. But now she has turned her attention to root vegetables, including this lucky carrot. The first thing to do is to draw it. I'm now selecting colours for the lovely orange of the carrot body itself and I've got a warm yellow there because warm yellows tend to make a much better um, orange than cool lemon yellows. I will probably include some of the lemon yellow at some point um, and a nice warm red. This is uh, what's called quinacridone red which is quite a mouthful to pronounce but makes lovely light oranges and I'm using a particularly knackered old brush because it doesn't matter that I get it a bit battered scraping around in pans of paint but it means that I'm saving the very sharp points of my best sable brushes for doing detail on the actual painting. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of this rather deep pink in. It's still looking a bit bright. I'll pick up some of the yellow, other yellow, and see what happens. gives me some variety and then if I add just a little bit of some of the green that I've already been using for the leaves that might take some of the extra brilliance out of it and make it just have that slightly more earthy quality that we expect. I have a system of working with about three brushes at a time, one with just wet on it and one with a lighter mix and one with a darker mix. I'm going to start off with putting some wet in with the colour coded brush and I'm putting that on the lightest areas of the carrot and actually even before I put any of the main orange colours on I'm going to put an undercoat of this slightly murky blonde colour because 
the carrot has blonde areas in it and I want to keep that without putting all the orange all over the top of it. So I'm just going to put that on it like that. And that can be drying off while I just use it for the little roots that protrude out of the bottom. I'm just still, still, still see it glistening in the light. I know I'm not there yet. Because it's quite crisp lines around there and I don't want to lose it. That's the first layer done and I just need to let that dry and already I can see what was a nice bright colour when this first went on is already looking really quite dull so that will be greatly improved when I apply the next layers and will work into the shadows making the shadows deeper but trying to keep this area fairly well lit so that it creates a nice ball image this has gone considerably paler as it's dried so even these little blondy bits I'm just putting a little bit of that colour in and although it looks quite rough it'll disappear with the next layer of paint. I'm starting to be more defined about where the main bulk of shadow and contrast are. I'm at the stage where I need to be putting the next coat on, it's all dry and I can start seeing the places that need adjusting and I'm just going to, one of the things I'm doing is adjusting the colour. I think it actually needs to be a little pinker than I've painted it. So I'm just tweaking with a bit of the pigments that I used in the leaves to create a slightly um, pinker tone than the one I'd been using up until now. Again, put some wet on that highlight there so that I don't lose it and drop the colour into the sides. And at the same time, I'm starting to look very closely at the tiny flecks of detail and what's called scarfing on the top of the carrot which only really become apparent as it's dried out because I gave it a good clean before setting it up as it was all obviously nice and earthy and these tiny little details are, are just becoming apparent taking a tiny bit of water on the tip of the brush, not so much that it makes the colour 
too wet and runny. And it goes on in places that I don't want it. But it makes it wet enough to mix in with the other pigment. This is the third stage and I've got to the point where I need to use the magnifying glass because we're working into finer and finer detail and I want to be sure that I'm not losing that and I'm keeping the edges crisp where I want them. So I've mixed up a bit more colour, not a huge amount and I'm just going to work with the, the wet brush and, the, um, and one coloured brush now. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go and put the last carrot coloured layer on now before I then start tweaking all the little tiny knobbles and creases and indentations which involve all other bits of colour. So this again working from general this is becoming much more specific and little areas at any one time being dealt with in an individual way
The carrots become duller uh, as it's dried from the first freshly washed stage. Uh, and having done more detail, the highlight uh, looks far too bright and unreal. Part of the discipline of generating a really solid image is to correct the depth of shading. It's surprising how dark you need to make something in order to produce a convincing three-dimensional looking picture out of essentially flat paper and wet paint. So now its portrait is nearly complete, just the stem at its crown to finish. Then it is joined by a painting of its cross section, and together they take their place along with three other varieties of carrot, elegantly grouped on a single sheet of paper. And this is just one of seven sheets of root vegetables Bridget has been painting for more than a year now. Her task is nearly finished. Root vegetables are underrated in so many ways. By the time we buy them in the shops, they've been neutered of all extravagance, been washed and trimmed and graded, and they possess none of the personality and individuality that push them from seed to plant. I never knew that parsnips left to their own devices sprout magnificent five-foot stems of golden flowers like cow parsley on steroids. And radishes bolt really quickly and burst into delicate white stars all over the place. And Swedes and turnips have long seed pods that come from tall wands of yellow petals. I just wanted to tell their story and show the extremely beautiful in the extremely ordinary.
I'm just using this um, sheet here as a testing sheet and it's got the greens that I've already been using for the foliage and I can keep the oranges next to it and see how they balance and work them together. And I'm just going to mix up a larger pool of the colour. Oh, bit bright. Let's get a bit of that green in just to turn it down. Maybe a bit too far. I can always make it dirty and duller afterwards, but if I make it dingy, that's better to start with. Then I can't get it back. 